Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy, and we're on game... Not game phone. <laughs> so many game phone coverage on this channel recently, but we're on Kickstarter. Woohoo! And we're looking at Rayman, the board game. Rayman, the board game. When was the, when was the last Rayman video game? 20 years ago? Like, this is an old IP. I'm surprised... Ubisoft, the holders, haven't brought a, a modern version, a, a new version of it. But, um, so I don't think any kids will have any inkling about what this is, unless a new video game comes out. So it's a little bit of an odd IP, it's like an old IP. Not to mention, there is a huge debacle going on with the IP holders Ubisoft at the minute. Not only did the company come under flack with a lot of sexual abuse in the company and the CEO did not retire, but they've now jumped into another hot potato issue, which is racism towards the Japanese um, using a Japanese character in the shape of a monument that represents Hiroshima's victims as a kind of imagine if we create a character like twin towers just to represent a u.s citizen in a game you would be m markedly be upset if you was american it's that strong you know the twin towers if you say saw a point hiroshima saw a point japanese why the heck did Ubisoft do that? Anyway, they're in hot water and they've even delayed their video games until next year because of the flack that's going on in the video game sphere. A lot of people are calling Ubisoft's collapse and I think this may have an impact on this Kickstarter because I think this IP and how this game looks is strong enough to get a lot of backers and not to see it go upwards towards half a million towards a million is shocking it really is this is one of the strongest ips you can get for animated video games that you can get rayman's iconic he's been in the video game sphere since i think the super nintendo back in 1991 or something like that it's going off the top of my head anyway it's like a race game but you can move up and down like jump to the jump up to upper lane you can fly across sections where there's no track and it has a little bit of take that in it as well to stop your opponents because hey you're in a race let's go down shall we it's coming down to the 48 hour and it looking the artwork looks incredible fly us dear me you've kicked one out of the park here look at the box art Beautiful. The attention to detail on these miniatures, they are going to have a huge, huge aftermarket flip. If you flip these miniatures, you're going to get a lot of money. Because regardless of where Ubisoft are in the news, you know, unless the CEO retires, people think Ubisoft are dead. Because there's a massive boycott going on with, with that company. Regardless, these minis just look fantastic. And whatever Ubisoft do, they would be crazy not to do another Rayman game. It's as strong as a Mario IP. It really is in the AAA space from Ubisoft. If you don't know video games, outside of Microsoft sony and nintendo you've got three giant players in the industry you've got electronic games ea ubisoft and who's the third one we don't know they disappeared did they <laughs> was there is there a third big one yeah it's coming from japan isn't it it's probably i would say a conglomerate of japanese capcom maybe or Final Fantasy people. Who are they? What are they called? I can't <laughs> I'm so bad with names. I really am. Anyway, you know who I'm talking about. What I'm trying to say is an extremely strong IP. We're probably going to see that. It would be criminal if we don't see another Rayman game in video games. It really wouldn't. And 
you know, I'm getting my son a Steam Deck for Christmas, so he has all my Steam library, and I think I've got Raymond in my Steam library somewhere, so he will be able to play this on the Steam Deck. And what a game to play on the Steam Deck. Oh. This is like printing money, Ubisoft. You've not done another Rayman game. Oh, my God. And I'm sorry, but your behavior, Ubisoft, in the video game industry, if that's put a biker on this franchise here, if you were looking for the people to come on this project and back it as a green light to think should we you know fund a video game well you've shot yourself in the foot there haven't you and ubisoft is a family run business from france by the way this is why the ceo has not been fired because basically the uh, the board is the family right it's family business so I guess time will, um, time is not going to help. Everyone still remembers the sexual abuse that was going on in the company and everyone's going to remember this racism if you're American. It is a legendarily bad story. I think the CEO does need to just step down and somebody else take over. That's not got the name Guillermo, whatever his last name is. <laughs> I'm sorry all this bad news. This is all on Ubisoft. This is because of the absolute... Boycott. Is it affecting this? Are, are, you're a board gamer, if you're watching this channel. Are you aware of what's going on with Ubisoft? Dude, this is why it's being boycott. I just need to get the elephant out there so you kind of understand why this game's not blown up because it just looks the bomb. It really does. It does look really, 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 really good. Yeah, a lot of, lot of buzz about it. Artwork looks great. Miniatures look great. You, Your hero has their own action cards. The action cards have um, all different art on them. For example, Raymond's card here, he can go sideways. Um, the four with the hand, is that? I can't even remember what that is. I looked at this game maybe two weeks ago and I didn't cover it because of the Ubisoft thing and then I basically thought I'm going to come here in the final days and see how big it got. So I can't really remember this. But any, anyway, it does look great because you've got different action cards and all this. There is a little bit of copy paste on the background of the action cards, which is a little disappointing. You know, I don't like that. I think it's lazy. But at least they've got the hero doing something different. Anyway. So, yeah, I think it does look backable, but I think regarding crowdfunding at the minute, if you look at my channel, fucking hell, man, have you got some stiff competition at the minute? I mean, if you look at the games I've covered in the last week, the stuff at Essen looks so tame in comparison. Story of Many... Uh, I'm like, I'm so bad with names. What did I do yesterday? That, that incredible. <laughs> Excuse me while I promote my channel. Let's go. Okay, competition at the minute that I think is fantastic. Story of Many, absolutely a must see. Far away, absolutely fantastic game. Robo Rover 2077. There you go. And if you like card games, one versus one, Havoc looks phenomenal. And the hard to get because of print, Leviathan Wilds, great game there also, potentially, if that's your cup of tea. And coming out soon, of course, is Starlock and Rumble Planet next week, I think. So these are giants as well that are coming out. So fucking hell, dude. Raymond, you've got some competition, my friend. Oh, yeah. Especially price points, because Story of Many is like $300. The game, I can't remember, Robo something that I just showed you. <laughs> I forgot the name already. That's $300. Fucking hell, dude. So you can see that people's budgets are getting squeezed. But that, I mean, you could come in and $1 pledge it, you know, if, if you want. Maybe when you $1 pledge it, you'll feel better about the $1 pledge if the CEO of Ubisoft steps down 
and it looks like they can be discerned in the corner. And the person that designed the racist thing gets fired. Like, there's so much stuff that needs to happen before people will do it. But I think $1 pledge can take you there. Um, it's just mega disappointing that they've got this shadow from the publisher over the top of it. I... I think this is the biggest question mark for me, is the metal box. Why the hell would you want a metal box? So it survives a nuclear bomb? <laughs> That's kind of weird. Nice that they're doing sleeves, but it does seem a little bit expensive, doesn't it? For 70 sleeves? $14? Are you kidding me? You get like a hundred premium sleeves for like six, don't you, in the US? So, yeah. That does seem to be, even if it's custom back, isn't it a bit of a scam, the custom back? Because the cards have this back on them regardless, don't they? <laughs> the scale figures look great, don't they? Oh, these are the large ones they're selling. These are going to be absolutely red hot on the second hand market. Or, you know, when you flip it, if a Raymond game comes out and it's rolling towards Christmas. So this this is going to have a, an incredible thing to flip these. Obviously, the Raymond one and Barbara. I mean, the collectible, really, aren't they? All right. So, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm backing two big juggernauts at the minute. And I'm guessing I'm in the boat of Ubisoft need to sort the shit out. And then I'll go and look at this on late pledge. Because I'm not even going to $1 pledge with what they've done. It's so offensive what they've done. I mean, it really is. I, I can completely sympathise with the Japanese. You know, I think Japan have banned all Ubisoft games on the consoles. So, you know, it's, it's a, a massive effect. Um, so, yeah, look at this. 255, then, if you want all of it in. You're right up there with those juggernauts. And if you look at Story of Many, oh, my God, you've got an Epic, massive game, though. That's merging role-playing games on the tabletop. Dude, that is the biggest ambitious game I've seen since this channel began five years ago. Story of Many, same price as Raymond All In. Are you kidding me? Yesterday, the Robo-something, can't remember your name, 2070-something. That has the same price as Rayman. And it has a great toy factor in... Absolutely interactable um, toy. What is it? It's like a citadel that you're trying to repair. That has an app and a board. It is so innovative. It's incredible. And here, all it's doing really is a racing game. Nice cards, yes. But it looks simple. With all these minis or figures that you can flip. So... For me, you're just up against some epic games. That's all I'm saying. Right. But it does look good. <laughs> I don't know why they just didn't wait till January because number one, you would have not been in the Ferrari of people that's going on with Ubisoft. And number two, competition wouldn't be as stacked as the Essen weekend on Kickstarter or GameFoe because, dear me, you the only way you're going to stand out from the crowd at the minute let me just go back to my channel. The only way you're going to stand out for the crowd at the minute is if you are innovating where you can clearly see why crowdfunding is needed. 
Story of Many. This is in production for maybe 10 years. I mean, this game is a, is a monster. It, it just looks phenomenal. Robo Rover. Three years to get the game going. The technology between the toy factor, the Citadel and the app already have experience with the team. But still, it's massive innovations with these two games. Massively pushing what the tabletop experience is. And you've got, we move over. In fact, just these are the two that I completely recommend. If you've got money that you want to spend during this Essen week, these two games <laughs> are big. They're very big. And then we go over to Raymond. That's ending at the Essen weekend. And dear me. Number one, your game doesn't look that innovative. Number two, you've got the big shadow of Ubisoft. So debacle over the top of you. And number three. How is anyone going to back this game with the incredible, insatiable appetite for these other games that just look, oh my god, need to back them. So there's three things. <laughs> maybe, maybe the fourth one is that the IP is dead at the minute. No, you know, you'd have to be 30. <laughs> I'm trying to think here, when was the last game? You have to be somewhat old to remember the IP, right? All right, so so there we are. Do we recommend it? Have you got a budget for $1,000? Then maybe. <laughs> if you've got a budget for maybe $600, pick the other two games. If you've got a budget for one of these three, you pick not this one. Simple as that. So, you know. If, if you're going in, what if you're going in for the low pledge? You might as well pick it up at retail. But you really want to play this game with the small miniatures, don't you? What's that pledge? How big is it? That's like a hundred and forty-four dollars. If you want Raymond with the <laughs> small figures, still expensive. I mean. If you're factoring in those other two big games, how the hell can you justify not backing the others, but backing this with another, or just this? I don't know. Maybe you'll pick it up on late pledge in a month when there's zero on Kickstarter and you've got the appetite and budget for splashing out that month and you go on late pledges and you see Raymond and you pick it up then, pending the Ferrari at Ubisoft is cleared up. A again, you've got to support this boycott of Ubisoft. And they are the holders of the IP. And even though Flyos have got nothing to do with that, the boycott will pressure Ubisoft to fire the people involved in this racism... And how the CEO has survived sexual harassment in the company and now racism. How's he not how's he not stepped down? It's bonkers. <laughs> oh. And remember Disney, they've got Ubisoft just released a Star Wars game and that's getting also boycotted so even something as big as star wars has got boycotted so this is why raymond i think has also been picked up because everybody knows raymond is ubisoft you, you can't dis, 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 disenfranchise your way against ubisoft with raymond it's clearly their ip it's because if you say mario you know it's nintendo if you say sonic you know it's sega if you say raymond you know it's ubisoft <laughs> But I'm coming in this because I, I'm i also a fan of video games, evidently. Maybe you're coming in this from the board game and you don't know what's going on. Maybe that neutrality is letting you get interested in this before. But um, yeah, let me know your comments down below. 
if you knew what's going on, if you're bothered by what's going on, or you know what's going on, but you don't care anyway. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts down below on this issue, because for me, it's, it's like a, a hot potato that's not going away anywhere soon, and you've just got too much big competition on crowdfunding at the minute, so pff, dear me. Raymond, the board game, do we recommend it? No, we don't. I've explained why. So thank you so much for watching. If you love crowdfunding, please check out my channel, Special Programs, on my playlist, where I cover lots of interesting topics on the industry. Yeah, it'll only take you 10 seconds to have a look. I'm sure there's a video that you'd be interested in. And if you like the content, please think about subscribing. And if you're still here, give the video a like. Thank you so much. This was Raymond the Board Game on Kickstarter. What are you doing here? Just just cancel and come back in January. And hopefully Ubisoft have sorted the shit out. Pardon my French. On that bombshell, thank you so much for watching. This has been Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy. Feeling a lot better from my cold that I've had this week. I have improved it today, you probably noticed. <laughs> Until next time, thank you so much for watching. You take care, stay safe, and bye-bye for now.